Welcome to section 29 of the viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing the first paramyxovirus, parainfluenza virus, which you can see right here. Our parainfluenza story takes place in the front yard of this person's house. Notice the red warm color scheme. This indicates that parainfluenza virus is an RNA virus. Now the paper boy has just delivered the family's newspaper. Notice that the weather forecast predicts big rain coming. This big rain cloud indicates that parainfluenza virus is a negative sense RNA virus. Now dark rain clouds typically bring people a negative vibe. So negative rain cloud stands for negative sense virus. Here's where the scene takes a weird turn. These crayons are obviously alive. All afternoon they've been melting on the sidewalk and now they scream in agony as they mix together. This pair of mixing crayons represents paramyxovirus which is the family that parainfluenza virus belongs to. Now these two crayons found refuge in a pair of flutes. See the flutes sitting outside their open cases? This represents parainfluenza virus. So a pair of flutes for parainfluenza. Now the child who left these crayons out here to melt must have left the slinky as well. Look at that slinky all melted in with these crayons. This slinky forms that helical shape, and this helical shape represents the helical capsid in parainfluenza virus. Look at that dog sniffing around. She's probably disturbed from the screaming crayons on the sidewalk. You can see her sniffing these strange footprints. This line of footprints indicates that parainfluenza virus is a linear virus. So line for linear virus. Now these tracks lead right to an exhausted crayon who is running to get inside before the big rain clouds come. He's been running for a while now and he's exhausted. Look at him there trying to catch his breath. This exhausted out of breath crayon represents the respiratory distress that can accompany an infection with parainfluenza virus. Now seeing that crayon run towards his owner's house, this dog is out of control. Look at him bark like that. This barking dog represents the barking cough that is often heard in patients with parainfluenza virus. So barking dog for barking cough. In his fierce anger, the dog is losing its mind. It's practically getting choked as the collar compresses his trachea. This represents the tracheal narrowing that parainfluenza virus can often cause. Here's an image of tracheal narrowing on an x-ray. You can see that the inflammation has led to narrowing of the trachea as well as the subglottic region, as indicated by that black arrow. So again, trachea squeezing on the dog stands for tracheal narrowing. Now look at these two crayons who are stuck outside, terrified of what's in store for them. Either the dogs or the rain will get them. Now in their fear, they've etched themselves a little church, hoping to reach the Crayola gods for help. As you can see, they even included this little steeple here. This steeple stands for the steeple sign created with tracheal narrowing. Going back to our tracheal narrowing radiograph, we can see that all of that inflammation has actually created that steeple sign. Now also notice the stripes along their little chapel. Stripes kind of sound like strider. Strider is that noisy sound that can be heard when children are struggling to breathe through that narrow trachea. So stripes for strider. Now this blue crayon, seeing that dog bark and realizing he has no way to get into the house for safety, he's pooped himself. Now this represents croup. Croup is the truncated way of saying crayon poop. This is the name often given to the infection caused by parainfluenza virus. So as you study, you may hear the word croup, but remember that croup just means parainfluenza virus. Now this dog was also sniffing those footprints until that blue crayon pooped. That's about all the allergens this pup could handle, so we finally sneezed. This dog sneezing all that snot represents the upper respiratory symptoms that can accompany croup, or parainfluenza virus. Now up here you can see this green crayon has finally reached the front door. You can see he's grasped onto that screen on the door, but he can't seem to get beyond that. And this blue crayon, seeing the plight of his crayon comrade, yells, he needs in. He's hoping that some crayon on the inside will help escort the green one in. He needs in sounds like hemagglutinin. Hemagglutinin is a glycoprotein on the surface of parainfluenza virus, and it binds to sialic acid on host cell membranes. So this green crayon attaching itself to the surface of the screen and his friend yelling, he needs in, stands for hemagglutinin and how it works. Thankfully, some crayons on the inside heard this cry for help. You can see two of them bursting out of the screen, each wielding new erasers. Erasers were the closest weapons they could find near the crayon box. And new erasers sounds like neuraminidase. Neuraminidase is an enzyme required to break up neuraminic acid. And this allows the parainfluenza virus progeny, or the virions, to break out of the host cell and spread to new cells. So new erasers for neuraminidase. And lastly, parainfluenza virus, or croup, can cause pulsus paradoxus. This can be remembered by this dog pulling the pair of boxes. This describes a decrease in systolic blood pressure when the patient inhales. Now normally, during inspiration, the right ventricle will fill with blood, and this will decrease systolic blood pressure. But normally, 
the decrease in systolic blood pressure isn't more than 10 millimeters of mercury, but in pulses paradoxes, it drops more than 10. Now the physiologic mechanism behind this is described in the cardiac physiology chapter. For now, just know that pulses paradoxes describes a patient taking a deep breath in and the systolic blood pressure dropping more than normal. And now that we've covered the image, let's do a question to apply this. A two-year-old boy is brought to the pediatrician due to strange noises each time he coughs. The boy's mother says that he sounds like a coughing seal. On physical examination, he appears mildly uncomfortable and demonstrates rib retractions. The physician informs the mother that her son has croup. Which of the following is true regarding this patient's condition? A. He has been infected with an influenza virus. B. A radiograph may reveal subglottic narrowing. C. The virus is ready to be translated upon entry to the host cell. Or D. The virus has double-stranded genetic material. Now hopefully you noticed the barking cough. The mom says the boy sounds like a coughing seal. And the rib retractions demonstrate respiratory distress. And we're told to assume this is croup based on the doctor's diagnosis. With that in mind, the correct answer is B. A radiograph may reveal subglottic narrowing. Recall the dog getting choked by his collar, narrowing the trachea. Inflammation of the trachea and the subglottic region create that steeple sign we talked about before, and this can lead to a barking cough as well as strider. And choice A is wrong because croup is the parainfluenza virus, which is a type of paramyxovirus, not influenza. Now choice C is wrong because this option describes a positive sense virus. And parainfluenza virus is a negative sense virus, which means it must first use its own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase to essentially become a readable positive sense virus before it can be translated. So this option is inconsistent with parainfluenza virus. And finally, choice D is wrong because almost all RNA viruses are single-stranded. So in our images, always assume that the RNA virus is single-stranded unless there's something striking in the image indicating two strands. And that's everything you need to know about parainfluenza virus.